Okay, uh, so now let's talk about the PCA or the principal component analysis. Uh, we saw this one, I think, uh, earlier um, this semester where uh, in the automod, uh, in the uh, Tableau Prime, where uh, when we clean data, we can perform the PCA. And also when we talk about the high dimensional data, so we can also use PCA to reduce uh, the, uh, the dimensions. So PCA basically will allow you to extract one or more dimensions that captures as much variation of the data as possible. Uh, so basically, for example, if you have a high dimension data, let's say if you have um, 500, 500 uh, features, and if you just want to keep, let's say, in a feature generation or feature selection, you just want to keep, let's say, 400 fe four features, okay? So because, you know, some models, they prefer, they cannot handle high dimension data. And sometimes if you want to visualize your data, so you want to capture the 400 four features instead of use 500 features. Um, if you keep, if you just randomly select four features, we know that you will lose the explanation power. Okay, so you will lose the explanation power um, because you will lose some uh, the, the data. So, but by using PCA, uh, what we can do is that we will say, for example, we will mix some features into one component and we will mix some features into another component. So the basic idea is that you will reduce the number of the features or the number of the dimensions. However, and hopefully you will maintain a relative high explanation power. Okay. Um, so it can also can be used as a data cleaning mechanism. So that's why we saw that one in the Tableau Prime. So that it can be used to eliminate those noise dimensions and also can also help you to integrate or consolidate dimensions um, that are highly correlated. So it is used, can be used uh, for feature gen generation or extraction. Okay, so that is feature selection. Uh, and also can be used to visualize high dimensional data set. Okay, uh, there are also disadvantages. So the first disadvantage is that you, you will still lose your explanation power. So we all keep relatively high, keep as much as possible to the original uh, explanation power. However, we will still lose some, to some extent, we will still lose explanation power. The secondly is that it will make the model hard to interpret. So for example, in the original data set, we have like the price, um, the number of the bedrooms, uh, the lot size, the area, etc. And if you combine them into two components, so the component one and also, and also component two, and the component will be the mix of those features. So when you want to explain the, uh, the model, so, it's, uh, so for example, the C has very high correlation with uh, contributing to your model. It is hard to tell, it is hard to explain what C stands for because C is come from all the other features. Okay, so talking about how the component being created. So this is one example that we have two features and for those two features, we want to extract two components. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so those are the two components. So first, we transfer that one uh, so that we want to put X to be the first component and also Y to be the second component. Okay. And then next, we want to eliminate one, um, one component so that we just keep the first component. Okay, and finally, we transfer the, uh, the model back so that we have two features, but those two features just has one component, okay, so that we reduce the dimension of the original data into just one single component, but theoretically, we may still have a relatively high explanation power of the data set. Okay, so those are a pretty... Um, uh, abstract concept. So let's look at some examples. So here, let's say 
go back to our normalized model. So let me uh, disable those data. And here, let's say we're still using the data set in the k means, but instead, we want to use a price as a label. So we want to use all the other features to predict the price. So let's say we set the price as a label. OK, and let's look at the data set. Uh, so now we have the price as labels. We have all the other features like number of bedroom, bathroom, year that has been built, and also lot size, and also area. OK, so let's use those one, two, three, four, five features to predict the house price. OK, uh, say let's use a regression model. Let's use a linear regression model. So linear regression model. And let's apply the model. And let's look at the performance. OK, so we check the squared correlation. And now let's do it. So now we can see R squared is 0.5. It's not very, not very good. And also the linear regression models will be that we are using all those features. OK, and we can see that area is significant and the bedroom is kind of significant. All the other features are not significant. OK. So that is our linear, linear regression model. So we use all the features to, to, to predict the house price. So however, how will the PC work? So let's say let's have PCA, principal component. Let's drag that one. And let's feed the data to the PCA. And here, let's say that we want to keep the number of components. So let's say we want two components. OK, so let's say we want two components. And, and let me disable those linear regression first. OK, and let's see how the result looks like. Oops, let me disable this one as well. OK. So now you can see instead of having uh, all those uh, columns, the four or five uh, features, now we have only two components, the component one and also component two. OK. And if we are using those two components to make a prediction. Um, so let's copy. The, so let's move that. OK, so now instead of using those original uh, features, we, uh, we perform a PCA first. So we reduce the number of the features from uh, five dimensions into two. And now let's perform this linear regression model. Uh, see, now you can see that we're using the two components to make predictions. And you can see R squared is a little bit lower, but it's not that lower. But the benefit is that we're using the low dimensional data, so not the high dimensional data. So it might be something that might be good for other models, which uh, will work best on low dimensional data. However, the disadvantage is that we don't know that how we can interpret the model. OK. Um, so uh, OK. So let's compare, actually, let's compare those two models together. So let's say we report this one. OK, this is the PC model. And this is the PC analysis. And let's copy and paste. Uh, copy that one and paste here. Where we are using The same data set. And this will be just the normal model, and this will be the normal uh, performance. 
Okay, and so let's look at the model and also performance. Uh, so this is a normal performance. We can see it's uh, 0.527. And for the PC, we can see it is relatively lower, but, uh, but it is the same. Okay, But if we look at the models, so this is a linear regression model. So we are, we are using one, two, three, four, uh, sorry, four features to make predictions, to predict the price. And uh, you can see that when you the number of bedrooms um, actually that's interesting. So decreased, the price will increase. Okay, and also when the lot size uh, increase, your price will also be, also increase. The area increase, uh, your price will increase. Okay, so you can see it's pretty straightforward to uh, explain your model. However, so if you look at the linear regressions. We just have two components, and it's hard to tell, OK, so uh, what does that mean? However, we do know that those two components are all significant, OK, because we captured, uh, we maintained the explanation power by reducing the number of the uh, features or number of the dimensions in the data set. 